Do you remember when you looked at starting equipment uh, when you were making your character and then you looked at it again? Neither do I, because starting equipment generally sucks. I think we've all agreed on that, but it's actually not true. I mean, in some cases, it absolutely is true. And I'm going to start with those specific cases. First off, I'm going to start with Acid Vial. You can either splash this shit at somebody or throw it at 20 feet and it shatters. And if it hits as an improvised weapon, which means you can never really actually have proficiency with this thing, it will do 2d6 acid damage, and that is it. Can I ask the people who made this item why it cost 25 gold per use? That's ridiculous. Next up is the lantern. It would make sense because I think we've all at least depended on a lantern when our electricity went out, but this is 5th edition. Every single class and every single race has dark vision. We're never gonna use this thing. After that, we have poison. Just a little vial of poison. Have you ever heard of the spell Bless? A first level spell that lasts for one minute, giving 10 rounds of an added D4 damage? Imagine there was an item that did the same thing, but only worked once? Sounds as shitty and useless as True Strike, doesn't it? Then why the hell does it cost 100 gold? That's as much as a common magic item. 100 gold is half as much that you need to buy an actual elephant. A trained elephant. After that, we have shit like Alchemist Fire, which cost half as much, and will do 1d4, which is still more because it does it continuously over rounds, but it's still a piece of shit. Then we have Antitoxin, which is literally only good for hunting spiders and snakes. There's no other reason that you would buy this in preparation for some very, very specific event, unless you're paranoid. Now moving a little bit further away from shitty items, we have oil. Oil in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition is a gift from the gods themselves. It's a fuel for heat, it's a lube for squeaky doors and tin men, and it's an improvised combo weapon that does flat fire damage. A solid amount, more than a d4 could ever accomplish, at a total 5. And it can burn an area of 5 feet by 5 feet. And anything that enters that area doesn't have to make a save. It can't make a save. It can't be affected by some sort of damage die. It immediately is done 5 flat fire damage. So if you use this efficiently, because it cost 1 silver, that's 1 gold point for 50 to 100 fire damage. I think that's a little bit better than a vial of goddamn poison. Then there's other stuff that you probably take advantage of, but if your DM's a little ruthless, then a backpack is something that is absolutely necessary for you to consciously buy. It has one cubic feet of internal space, but staple some pouches to the side and wrap a rope around it, boom, 20 extra pairs of hands that you didn't have before. And then rope. On top of oil, this is the most important item in all of D&D. It's as diverse as a bathroom towel, because this item can be used for the following. Climbing mountains, crossing ravines, binding captives, combining items, weapons of momentum, kinky stuff, lassoing animals, synergy with mage hand, grappling hooks and bear traps, building rafts, traps, shelters and bolas, pulling creatures, crossing fast rivers, slings, splints and belts. Oh my. If you don't have a rope, if every person in your party doesn't have a rope, you're basically losing at D&D. After that, we have stuff like ball bearings. Another thing that no one will ever look at a second time and probably not use in a level 1 to 20 campaign. But these things can be used as sling ammo, tripping tools, which you really should be using. This stuff slows down anyone no matter what. I used it to get away from guards and then died promptly, but uh, we're moving on from that. You can also use it as stuff like rust monster bait. You can be creative with every single item in the equipment list that isn't magical. You can make it magical. Like caltrips, for existence. They're pretty much the same thing as above, but less funny. They're like uh, you throw Legos on the ground and the guards have to walk over them while they're chasing you. Then there's the option of buying 10 feet of string. This comes with a burglar's pack, and because it does, you can use it as a murder weapon, a burglar tool, or a small-scale crafting tool. This stuff is incredibly useful if you know what to do with it. Then you have a bell, just a normal bell, that you can use as a distraction if you toss it quietly enough, or an alarm tool. You also have a candle with one full hour of burning time, useful to start a fire quickly. 
and then you can buy a crowbar, which is, it, it's a goddamn crowbar. Go buy a crowbar. Or you can buy a hammer, which is a pressure tool. You can hit people with it. It's a precision pick, and you can hit people with it. Or you can buy pythons. These things are pretty weird if you don't know what they are. They're kind of like little daggers that you stab into mountains when you're climbing. And they're used for climbing both mountains and buildings. You can use them to avoid fall damage as it catches you after you fall for 10 feet. Or as a discreet weapon. It doesn't look like you're going to stab someone with it until they see the fire in your eyes. Then you have rations. Your DM probably forgot to ask you to buy these and you probably didn't care about them because someone in your party's a fucking hermit or a traveler or whatever and they can just feed you. But still, this stuff is awesome! First of all, jerky's delicious. Go buy jerky. If you live in America, it is $700 for a reason. It's amazing. Secondly, it can help with coaxing wild animals. Dried fruits are just also friggin' tasty. And hardtack is dry, salty-ass bread and they're all that also has nuts. This stuff keeps you not dead. Then you have a tinder box. You can use it to start a dry fire as one action or any other fire within a minute. You can use it to burn down farms, bandit camps, open fields teeming with young life, or with oil, the shit that I mentioned earlier. That stuff is amazing. Go buy all of it. Everyone, buy oil. Then you have a water skin. Fun fact about water skins, it's literally an animal bladder. Enjoy that knowledge. They're good for holding most liquids and might be less, I guess, puncturable in place of potions and stuff. Maybe not. But they're also good floaties if uh, you have a halfling in your party that just can't swim. You can also purchase a lock. It comes with a key, and if you put the lock on something, you can't get it without the key. Or uh, thieves tools. Then you have block and tackle. I didn't want to do math for this thing, but it's literally a pulley system that helps you carry four times your normal lifting weight. I'm pretty sure if you're a goliath or a half-orc, you could probably carry an entire boat up a mountain. If you really wanted to flex on your party members, go buy this shit. And then you have component pouches, which aren't just a little bag with every little thing you could possibly use. It's literally Batman's belt for wizards. It's amazing if you wanted to dump it out and then put different types of trail mix or berries in each one and then dole them out like you're a wizard. Or you have a healer's kit, which is if you don't have a cleric, you can cast Spare the Dying f over a really long amount of time, but it's better than nothing. You've also got holy water, which is good for fiends or undead. That's it. Or hunting traps. This is good for trapping beasts, bandits, delicious halflings, or eldritch horrors who happen to use legs. I like to tie it to myself instead of a tree and just huck the trap at people. 10% of the time it works 100% of the time. Then there's a magnifying glass. It's good for looking at tiny things or st starting fires. I mean, it takes five minutes, but... Wait, why does this cost half as much as an elephant? Uh, you can also buy manacles. You put them on people and it makes them unhappy. You don't even have to roll or anything. It just happens. Then you have the option of buying a portable ram. This thing weighs three, thir 35, 35 pounds. I think if, if you bought it, you probably know what you're going to use it with. You don't need me to tell you. Next up, you have a spell book. I feel like I don't need to tell you guys what this is. Because I just did. But a fun fact, the pages in spellbooks are actually made of vellum, the skin of baby cows. You monster. Also, I don't know why you can buy it, but under this list of items, there's a merchant scale. It's a scale that includes a small balance, some pans, and suitable assortment of weights up to two pounds. With it, you can measure the exact weight of small objects, such as raw precious metals or trade goods to help determine their worth. Why would you buy this? <laughs> oh no. And just because I snagged you with some clickbait, I can't let you go without my actual answer. I hate Sovereign Glue. It can't do anything, and I'll wage war in the comments until we find more than one good thing to use with fucking glue. Okay, I did have one actual good idea when we were playing a while ago. It's where you get a top hat, and you also have to have a bag of holding, and then a portable hole. 
Now you put Sovereign Glue on the portable hole first. You wrap your phylactery inside of that hole and stick it to the top of the hat. And then you coat the outside of the bag of holding with more glue and you stick that thing inside the hat too. Boom, you're an immortal lich who spawns within 10 feet of your hat no matter what. So thanks for watching. One interesting thing I noticed about books that you can buy is that they already have writing in them. If you go and buy a book because you need somewhere to write and the DM told you that you can't just remember things that easily, this book already has like poetry or history in it. I don't know why you'd buy these. Please tell me.